सी आई ई टी एन सी ई आर टी प्रेजेंट नेशनल कैरिकुलम फ्रेमवर्क ट्वेंटी पार्ट सी स्कूल सब्जेक्ट चैप्टर एट फिजिकल एजुकेशन एंड वेल बींग पेज नंबर फोर हंड्रेड एटीन फिजिकल एजुकेशन एंड वेल बींग इन स्कूल एम्स टू हेल्प स्टूडेंट्स लर्न टू लीड अ फिजिकली एक्टिव विगरस एंड हेल्दी लाइफ इन दिस एन सी एफ द टर्म फिजिकल एजुकेशन और पी ई हैज बीन यूज इन द प्लेस ऑफ फिजिकल एजुकेशन एंड वेल बींग फिजिकल एजुकेशन कंसिस्ट ऑफ मूवमेंट्स ड्रिल्स एक्सरसाइजेज योगा गेम्स स्पोर्ट्स एंड अदर एक्टिविटीज दैट प्रमोट माइंड बॉडी वेलनेस फिजिकल एजुकेशन शुड प्रोवाइड अ वाइड रेंज ऑफ एज अप्रोप्रिएट एंड लेवल अप्रोप्रिएट physical activities that develop knowledge of the body and of games and sports together with a disposition towards perseverance teamwork and sportsmanship krcr 2019 states the role of physical education thus physical education is important for both physical and mental health and development it helps improve a child's muscular and cardiovascular strength flexibility endurance motor skills and mind body connection and wellness it gives students the opportunity to set and strive for personal and achievable goals moreover playing sports also helps students develop the qualities of teamwork cooperation problem solving discipline perseverance and responsibility in general physical activity is well established to be among the best releases for tension and anxiety and facilitates emotional stability and resilience all these qualities and benefits are also relevant to success in the classroom studies show that students who stay physically active are more successful with other school work as well finally people who are physically active as young people tend to stay more fit as adults as well leading them to lead longer healthier and more productive lives there is a picture of a teacher and few students doing yoga here page number 419 section 8.1 aims physical activity is integral to human life and therefore integral to the school curriculum for the individual student Sports and physical activities teach important motor skills, practices of physical fitness, socio-emotional awareness and regulation, associated cognitive abilities as well as the values of hard work, teamwork and a gracious acceptance of one's strengths and vulnerabilities. Various forms of physical activities have unified people across the world. over shared common interests and spirits be it global sporting events or the spread of yoga sports games yoga and other such rigorous physical activities have allowed humanity to enjoy shared experiences emotions and excitement india has long recognized the centrality of a healthy body as part of any educational experience a very rich heritage of physical activities and games such as yoga wrestling malkam and archery indicate this connection between body health and the holistic development of a human being a good physical education program is therefore considered important for everyone regardless of the field of interest one wants to pursue in life physical education in schools must aim to achieve a appreciation for physical activity or sports sports and physical activities should be valued for the opportunities it provides for good health enjoyment self reflection and social interaction b capacities for skillful engagement in physical activity or sports physical education should develop knowledge and capacity to execute different kinds of skills and movements of the human body and participate in and enjoy a variety of activities games and sports c resilience physical education must develop resilience tenacity 
and an interest in the pursuit of excelling in physical capacities. D. Empathy and cooperation. Physical education must nurture empathy, cooperation, fair play and fraternity which are relevant throughout one's life to be a good human being and a contributing member of society and learn to meet winning and losing with grace. Box 8.1 1. Yoga The origin of all forms of yoga practiced today is in the Yoga Sutras, a collection of aphorisms written over 2000 years ago by Patanjali. The tradition has been passed on through generations and is in the form we see today. Yoga is not just a physical practice of asanas or postures, but is much more than that. Patanjali enumerates eight limbs of yoga. Ashtang Yoga They are Yama, that is universal moral commandments, Niyama, that is self-purification by discipline, Asana, that is posture, Pranayama, that is rhythmic control of breath, Pratyahara, that is withdrawal and emancipation of the mind from the domination of the senses and external objects, Dharana, that is concentration, Dhyana, that is meditation, and Samadhi, a state of super-consciousness brought about by profound meditation. Yama, Niyama and Asana are the three stages of outward quests, that is, Bahirang Sadhana. Page number 420 Yama and Niyama aim to control students' passions and emotions to stay in harmony with fellow human beings. Through the practice of asanas, student keeps the body and mind healthy, strong and in harmony with nature. These are largely the same aims as that of physical education in our school curriculum. We want students to be healthy, strong individuals who are in harmony with their surroundings and are contributing members of the community. Thus, the teaching of yoga is an integral part of the physical education program. Yoga asanas and practices like pranayama appear at multiple points in this document. Source Light on Yoga by B.K.S. Ayangar Section 8.2 Approach In this NCF, physical education is seen as an important curricular area and not just an extracurricular activity. It has its own set of learning standards, content, appropriate pedagogies and assessments. This curricular imagination is informed by some core principles that have been outlined in this section. A. Schools must have physical education classes for all stages. Students in the preparatory stage enjoy free play and want to participate in most games. We should encourage free play, creative manipulation of rules and local games at this stage. In the middle stage, students should continue to play local games but should get oriented towards more widely practiced games. They should also actively participate in competitive sports events. Students at the secondary stage should be encouraged to choose one sport or game or activity and develop proficiency to compete at a high level. All students across the stages must have compulsory physical education class as part of their timetable. In instances where certain students at a very young age become interested in participating in different inter-school, local, state, national and international competitions, schools must make reasonable accommodations so that they can pursue their interests. The additional enrichment period on the timetable or a similar after-school program should be used for this. B. Schools must ensure adequate resources for physical education. In cases where schools have no playground, they must ensure access to nearby public grounds 
or spaces for students. In instances where this is not possible either, schools must develop ways to conduct physical activities that do not require much space, such as yoga, static exercises or movements, table tennis. Similarly, until a PE teacher is appointed, other teachers must be educated to conduct physical activities under the guidance of any PE teacher available in the school complex, school cluster or nearby schools. In case of limited availability of equipment, the choice of games or sports or physical activity must be made accordingly. The non-availability of playground, PE teachers or use-worthy equipment should not be considered as limiting factors in the education and engagement of students in physical activities. Page number 421. C. Schools must give equal importance and status to the subject of physical education. Health and physical education in schools have received lower importance as compared to other curricular areas. NEP 2020 recognizes this and emphasizes that it should be given equal importance and treatment in the curriculum. Physical education is equally important for all students and we must create enabling conditions for it in our curriculum, infrastructure and school operations, including appropriate time in the school calendar and teacher preparation. D. Schools must ensure equal opportunity for all students in physical education. 1. Students of all levels of interest, inclination and ability must engage in physical education. Like all other curricular areas, some students may be more inclined towards physical education than others. This curriculum therefore suggests two modes for imparting physical education. 1. The compulsory PE class. All students must attend the regular PE classes on the timetable. Activities in this class can be different for various groups based on their capacity and level of appropriateness. All students in schools will be part of this class and receive equal attention and support of learning, which means equal access to PE teachers' time, equipment and opportunities to play. 2. The optional physical education after school program. Those students who wish to engage in physical activity and sports on a deeper level can be part of this program. Schools may organize special skill building classes, provide physical education, teacher support and access to equipment before or and after school hours. Such an arrangement must be considered as part of the curriculum and not as preferential treatment as this opportunity should be available for all students who show interest. 2. Students of all genders should regularly play together across all age groups, keeping in mind safety considerations. Students become accustomed to playing together and grow in their maturity to play comfortably in mixed gender groups over time. Therefore, this approach is best introduced as early as possible right from the foundational stage. Schools can make choices about having mixed teams in contact sports like Kabaddi based on the socio-cultural attitudes in their locality or region. 3. Schools must ensure the participation of students with disabilities in physical education to the extent that is possible for them. This requires adapting play conditions through thoughtful accommodation or modification to enable them to participate. For example, accommodation can be made by increasing the time to finish a run and or allowing for individual differences in the skill levels expected of students with disabilities. Similarly, modifications can be made to the game rules that would ensure that students play cooperatively with differently skilled students and or plan a different game or sport altogether, example wheelchair race. E. Schools must teach cooperation and teamwork through physical education. 
sports particularly team sports give opportunities for working together towards a specific goal participants must cooperate to improve the overall team's performance and individual capacities that contribute to the team's performance this cooperation is facilitated through dialogue especially while strategizing before a game or reviewing after a game based on questions such as how did i behave when my competitor got injured how do we construct teams when we know different team members have got different abilities and each one is better than the others in one or two aspects why are some abilities seen as more important how does one feel when they lose how must we react in such situations what were the few crucial moments of the game when the team was competing and lost the advantage page number 422 f schools must ensure healthy competition and use it to explore personal capacities and limits the physical education curriculum aims to nurture empathy cooperation fair play and fraternity healthy competition in the context of physical education needs to be viewed as a means to enable the holistic development of students students must be taught to compete without compromising the values of sportspersonship and positive regard for others they must be encouraged to pursue excellence and perfection in practice and performance for their own sake rather than to defeat and overpower peers the key is to challenge oneself to grow into the next level of competence there are several implications for this position one students must be grouped in teams with due consideration given to special needs such that it does not develop feelings of inferiority or superiority as both have serious negative consequences two values such as empathy cooperation fair play and fraternity must be promoted and celebrated each time there is a competitive event 3 winning or losing a game should be seen as an opportunity to help students reflect critically on feelings of undue pride or embarrassment or distress the effectiveness of the strategy 4 the selection of students for inter school competitions must be fair and transparent section 8.3 nature of knowledge a to do is to know physical activity squarely falls under the category of practical knowledge where to know is acquired only by doing the activity one cannot claim to know swimming without doing it once an individual has performed the activity they can reflect observe and explain how the activity is done but it is not useful to reverse the sequence of this progression b regular progressive practice and layered learning leads to proficiency physical activities are learned over a period of time one must perform an activity multiple times before gaining basic proficiency in it and to do it well for example to do tadasana properly the toes should be spread out evenly the weight should be balanced equally between the right feet left feet forefoot and heel the tailbone should be tucked in and the shoulders should be pushed back it might take weeks of training to get these aspects right before moving on to others it will involve a large element of physical memory so after a few weeks these aspects are also automatic the instructor can then move on to other aspects of tad asana page number 423 c teaches awareness of body and space learning awareness of how the body can move in space in different contexts of sport and physical activity is an integral part of physical education this embodied awareness is about recognizing what is happening in one's body expanding the field of awareness around oneself and having an alertness towards others in the context of sports and physical activity 
along with this kind of embodied awareness learning to strategize before and during a game and wide range of skills in the use of equipment are also integral to playing well for example in cricket the bowler bowls to the field and the batsmen find gaps in the field to hit their shots in team sports like football and hockey the players train in spatial patterns so that they know where their teammates are without looking d learning is remembered for a very long time another aspect of physical activity is that once learned the knowledge stays with an individual for a long time and is like second nature it is difficult to forget completely how to swim or hit a top spin shot with the table tennis racket once you have mastered it one might be out of touch with these activities for years but can restart with some practice in this sense the knowledge of physical practice is embodied and stays with us e enables understanding of physical and emotional limits and skills in working together This aspect of the nature of physical activity can be characterized into three components: one, knowledge of physical self and capacities. A person who is regularly engaged in physical activities will have a better understanding of the body's capabilities and limitations. For example, someone who lifts weights regularly will know how much weight they can lift in a real-world scenario. for example a sack of rice against someone who does not people who engage in physical activities regularly are likely to be more sensitive to changes in their body in the short term example need for rest or sleep knowing when they are overeating and in the long term example improving their appetite changing their sleep cycle two knowledge of mental and emotional capacities through regular participation and reflection in sports a person also learns about how they feel and react under different circumstances for example one learns about how assertive they are how they perform under pressure how strongly they feel about an unfair situation and how they react to it and so on 3 knowledge of social surroundings and how to work with them Team sports require all the individuals in the team to understand each other, communicate at different levels that is before, during and after play, build common strategies and play different roles required within the team, teaching skills of being social and working together. Page number 424, section 8.4, current challenges. A. Status of physical education in schools and community. Physical education in schools is mostly considered as a subject to engage students during leisure time, recess or when a subject teacher takes leave. It is feared that playing too much sports, games or other physical activities will badly impact students' education. Schools lack an understanding of teaching and learning physical education. whatever body of knowledge exists so far is more about the rules of game playground dimensions physiology of the body and nutritional requirements only b lack of infrastructure and resources physical education requires open spaces indoor facilities specific exercises and sufficient sports equipment to provide a better quality of learning the lack of adequate infrastructure and resources is a huge challenge in most schools c lack of availability of pe teachers in schools has always been a challenge particularly in subjects such as art physical education and vocational education currently we have very few good education institutions providing education programs and training for physical education teachers and teacher educators d inadequate scholarly literature in physical education what do we know and how do we know are perennial questions in the field of physical education the lack of sufficient region wise studies research and academic literature on physical education in india is not helpful 
for young scholars and researchers to pursue this area further. This is an area that would require sustained efforts and far more academic interest and work. E. Absence of school-wide physical education curriculum and focus on theoretical aspects. In the absence of a well-defined curriculum till grade 10 with specific learning outcomes and even lesser clarity on assessment possibilities, physical education has faced a serious pedagogical challenge. In schools, students are taken outside the classroom to perform activities or engage in playtime without structured and progressive guidance or learning standards. To worsen the issue, there is too much focus on theoretical aspects of sports. Sometimes students are taught about the dimensions of a football or cricket ground or tennis courts rather than playing the sport. F. Inadequate nutrition for physical activities and sports. For many students across India, the midday meal is the only substantial meal available for the day. This means their nutritional needs are grossly unfulfilled and this often compromises their ability to participate in many planned and rigorous physical activities. Page number 425, section 8.5, Learning Standards. Learning standards for physical education across stages flow across four core areas. Motor and movement skills to participate in different physical activities, appropriate personal and social behaviours, mental engagement in physical activities, and setting and achieving goals or targets. They progress in complexity and diversity along these four core areas across stages. For example, movements and skills start with learning basic skills such as kicking, hitting, catching and throwing which progress to the next level by combining them with movements. Example, throwing while running. This further progresses to the next level by combining more than one movement with skills. Example, running, jumping and catching simultaneously or anticipating diving and catching the ball on the move. Similarly, personal and social behaviour ranges from simply observing and following rules at the preparatory stage to regulating one's own and teammates' behaviour. Mental engagement spans around observing and finding patterns at the preparatory stage and runs into game strategies by the end of the secondary stage. Setting targets and recording progress begins with simple things like being able to just record your progress against a target set by the teacher and goes on to assessing progress in terms of efforts, processes and outcomes. By the end of the secondary stage, all this ultimately leads to every student being able to a. Demonstrate skills and knowledge to participate in diverse physical activities and at least play or perform one sport or physical activity well. b. Develop resilience, tenacity and interest in the pursuit of excellence. c. Nurture empathy, fair play and cooperation. A nested design of learning standards. As mentioned in Part A, Chapter 3, Section 3.1, giving due consideration to the time schools might require in the implementation of physical education as a full-fledged subject across the stages, for example, appointment of teachers, acquisition of resources. This document contains nested learning standards for physical education, wherein learning standards have two sets which have been detailed. The first set, called Learning Standard 1 or LS1, details the full range of curricular goals and competencies across physical education. These should be accomplished by all schools as soon as they add the required resources for physical education. Nested within this is a subset called Learning Standards 2 or LS2. These should be accomplished by all schools from the very initiation of the implementation of this NCF. Page number 426, 8.5.1 Preparatory Stage 
By the end of the foundational stage, most students would be able to demonstrate basic movements, motor skills, awareness of rules and participation in activities and games. The emphasis in the preparatory stage would be to build on this to develop skills such as rolling, throwing, catching, dribbling, kicking and striking. The focus should remain on basic skills, the joy of playing and the ability to display appropriate behaviours and attitudes during activities. Students should recognise the value of rules, fair play, safety and respect for others. At this stage, local games must be preferred and encouraged. 8.5.1.1 Learning Standards 1 CG1 demonstrates the use of basic skills, that is, running, jumping, catching, throwing, hitting and kicking, to participate in different physical activities or games or sports. C1.1 practices a combination of movement, motor skills and Manipulative skills, that is, catching, throwing, kicking, hitting a ball towards a target while moving, focusing on visual cues to hit the target. C1.2 moves purposefully their body to a beat or rhythm or music. C1.3 demonstrates coordination abilities with a partner and objects, example being able to move in coordination with a partner in three-legged race hand-eye coordination while bowling, throwing. C1.4 demonstrates basic warm-up exercises and stretching to develop strength and flexibility in the body. CG2 develops an awareness of their personal and social behaviour towards themselves and others. C2.1 demonstrates the ability to play games and activities which require and emphasise teamwork, cooperation, personal responsibility and communication of ideas. C2.2 creates group norms and rules of the game or activity before playing and reviews them regularly. C2.3 exhibits sensitivity to injuries of others and acts empathetically when the other player is physically injured, emotionally stressed or feeling unwell. C2.4 practices care and responsibility towards physical activity material, playground and facilities. C2.5 identifies characteristics of safe or unsafe touch in the context of physical activity and describes ways of reporting them. CG3 demonstrates mental engagement in physical activity or game situations. C3.1 explains the concept of some games, their rules, playing positions and basic moves. C3.2 expresses their emotions and thinking process during the game. Page number 427, CG4 develops an understanding of the need to develop themselves and self-assess their program. C4.1 sets simple personal goals or targets and records progress. Example, throwing a ball at 25 meter, then 30 meter, then 40 meter, jumping one or two or three feet high or long. 8.5.1.2 Learning Standards 2 CG1 Learns the use of basic skills that is running, jumping, catching, throwing, hitting and kicking a ball to participate in different physical activities or games or sports. C1.1 practices a combination of movement, motor skills and manipulative skills. Example, catching, throwing, kicking, hitting a ball towards a target while moving, focusing on visual cues to hit the target. C1.2 demonstrates coordination abilities with a partner and objects. Example, being able to move in coordination with a partner in three-legged race, hand-eye coordination while bowling, throwing. C1.3 demonstrates basic warm-up exercises and stretching to develop strength and flexibility in the body. CG2 
exhibits awareness of personal and social behavior towards themselves and others. C2.1 demonstrates the ability to play games and activities that require and emphasize teamwork and cooperation. C2.2 creates group norms and rules of the game or activity before playing and reviews these regularly. C2.3 exhibits sensitivity to injuries of others and acts empathetically when the other player is physically injured, emotionally stressed or feeling unwell. C2.4 practices care and responsibility towards physical activity material, playground and facilities. C2.5 identifies characteristics of safe or unsafe touch in the context of physical activity and describes ways of reporting them. CG3 demonstrates mental engagement in physical activity or game situations. C3.1 explains the concepts of some games, their rules, playing positions and basic moves. C3.2 expresses their emotions and thinking process during the game. 8.5.2 Middle Stage In this stage, students are in their adolescence and differences in physical appearance, weight, height and gender-related experiences become pronounced. Preoccupation with appearance and self-image provides teachers with opportunities to talk about health and the need for physical activity. Physical education classes provide an ideal setting for adolescents to learn and practice skills of social and personal responsibility while following rules, regulations and safety procedures. It provides ground for students to perform, gain and give respect and build self-confidence. Cooperation is an important social skill for this age group and students must be taught to cooperate with their peers and accept responsibility for their behavior. For this age group, winning becomes important so teachers would need to emphasize that participation and playing well with the group as perhaps more important. Students also learn to refine combine and apply a variety of movement and motor skills in different physical activity settings. Page number 428 Games that promote all students playing together should be encouraged. It is recommended that students continue to play local games at this stage and at the same time get introduced to popular competitive games or sports. 8.5.2.1 Learning Standards 1 CG1 Demonstrates intermediate body movements and motor skills to participate in different physical activities or games or sports and develop their understanding. C1.1 Develops power, speed, strength, balance, flexibility, judgment and reflexes in motor movements that is, running and jumping with various speeds and in various directions, rolling with zigzag movements, catching a moving object, coming with speed, or throwing or hitting a ball far with precision. C1.2 demonstrates rhythmic movement skills, that is, locomotor and non-locomotor, such as smoothly moving, balancing and transferring weight with intentional changes in direction, speed, tempo and flow. C1.3 performs two or more fundamental movements at the same time as receiving and passing the ball against a defender. C1.4 exhibits manipulation of space and equipment in the context of a game. C1.5 recognizes correct warm-up and cool-down exercises to avoid injuries and long-term effects. C1.6 works on strength, endurance, flexibility and agility through exercising and training with and without apparatus. CG2 exhibits sensitivity in their personal and social behavior towards themselves and others. C2.1 reflects on their personal reactions during an interaction or activity with others. C2.2 
demonstrates supportive behavior in helping others during emotional setbacks and physical injuries. C 2.3 creates and teaches the rule of game to others. C 2.4 creates and applies safety rules and protocols for physical activity. C 2.5 puts the larger interest of the team first, treats individuals as equals, makes ethical decisions and takes responsibility for their mistakes. C 2.6 identifies characteristics of bullying and mental and sexual harassment and describes the protocol to repeat it to the right person. CG3 demonstrates and practices physical movements, motor skills, social sensitivity and mental engagement in physical activity or game situations. C3.1 designs multiple strategies for a game and chooses strategies according to the context c 3.2 demonstrates calmness and courage in difficult situations page number 429 cg4 plans and achieves personal physical fitness goals with little help from teachers c 4.1 identifies physical activity and fitness goals such as improving a shot or breaking their own 100 meter record cg5 learns the connection between physical activity with health enjoyment challenge expression and social interaction c5.1 discusses activities that bring personal satisfaction c5.2 identifies different cultures with special reference to dance physical activity local games and spaces to interact c 5.3 identifies the relationship between rhythmic movement and their aesthetic value 8.5.2.2 learning standards 2 cg1 demonstrates intermediate body movements and motor skills to participate in different physical activities or games or sports and develop their understanding C 1.1 develops power, speed, strength, balance, flexibility, judgment and reflexes in motor movements that is running and jumping with various speeds and in various directions, rolling and zigzag movements, catching a moving object, coming with speed or throwing or kicking or hitting a ball far with precision. C 1.2 performs two or more fundamental movements at the same time as receiving and passing the ball against a defender c1.3 recognizes correct warm up and cool down exercises to avoid injuries and long term effects cg2 exhibits sensitivity in their personal and social behavior towards themselves and others c2.1 reflects on their personal reactions during an interaction or activity with others c 2.2 demonstrates supportive behavior in helping others during emotional setbacks and physical injuries c 2.3 creates and teaches the rules of a game to others c 2.4 creates and applies safety rules and protocols for physical activity c 2.5 puts the larger interest of the team first treats individuals as equals makes ethical decisions and takes responsibility for their mistake c 2.6 identifies characteristics of bullying and mental and sexual harassment and describes the protocol to report it to the right person cg3 demonstrates self awareness and mental engagement in physical activity or game situations c 3.1 designs and executes simple strategies for a game c 3.2 demonstrates calmness and courage in difficult situations page number 430 8.5.3 secondary stage grades 9 and 10 students experience numerous physical and physiological changes during these years boys typically experience a period of rapid growth around grade 9 
or until about 14 or 15 years of age on the other hand in grade 9 girls experience a slower rates of growth overall by grade 10 or higher most students start experiencing a relatively slower rate of growth this slow down in growth rate along with increases in the length and breadth of muscles produces a higher level of motor ability and fitness by this stage students are able to select activities they would like to pursue and they should be able to identify one sport or game in which they would like to excel and build proficiency to participate at a high level 8.5.3.1 learning standards 1 cg1 demonstrates high level of competence in the understanding of movement concepts strategies and principles while engaging in and performing physical activities including sports and dance c1.1 exhibits proficiency in all movement and motor skills required to participate and excel in at least one sport or yoga or any other physical activity that is team dual individual c1.2 explains role of rhythmic drills to improve their game c1.3 exhibits the ability to use complex movement concepts and principles to develop and refine their game or sports skills c1.4 exhibits and explains manipulation of space and equipment in the context of a game c1.5 applies knowledge and understanding of movements and skills to develop a physical activity plan for themselves follow a routine and assess independently cg2 exhibits sensitivity and learn to manipulate their personal and social behavior towards themselves and others c2.1 reflects upon their and others behavior before during and after the physical activity in the long term this may include different but related behaviors including emotional state of mind physical activity fatigue fair play biases personal interests c2.2 articulates the importance of emotional and mental support to others as well as improving performance and encouraging others to do so by analyzing the behavior of student when someone is emotionally or physically hurt and how their support may improve the other's performance c2.3 modifies or creates new games and rules that are more inclusive in nature c2.4 creates and applies safety rules protocols for physical activity and visualizes how they can be applied outside the field as well c2.5 demonstrates fairness and responsible behavior in tough contexts and situations c2.6 exhibits modesty after an exceptional performance accepts defeat gracefully and enjoys the game page number 431 cg3 demonstrates social sensitivity and mental engagement in physical activity or game situations c3.1 designs and uses multiple strategies in a game and has the ability to make new strategic moves in challenging game situations example a student's plan a and b both failed and strategizes a plan c during the game c3.2 understands and deals with their own and others's emotions and the thinking process during the game c3.3 demonstrates calmness and courage in difficult situations and is able to calm their teammates c3.4 regulates the intensity in different situations cg4 plans personal physical fitness goals independently and monitors them C4.1 sets multiple physical activity and fitness goals such as improving multiple shots or their overall match performance. C4.2 assesses their progress in terms of efforts, processes and outcomes. C4.3 prepares plans and schedules their own exercises and warm-ups in consultation 
with their teacher to get maximum benefits. CG5 learns about the value of physical activity for health, enjoyment, challenge expression and social interaction. C5.1 illustrates the role of physical education for positive social interaction while discussing physical activity throughout history and culture. C5.2 examines the role of physical activity in improving self-confidence and self-esteem. C5.3 appreciates the aesthetic appeal of a performance such as someone's classy straight drive, a beautiful free kick, effortless smashing of the ball, well-placed drop shot, speedy smash. C5.4 expresses self through dance, gymnastics or any physical activity. CG6 assesses their own growth and development. C6.1 examines the role of different factors which affect growth and development such as heredity, immediate environment, diet, diseases, state of mind and physical activity. C6.2 analyzes the relationship of nutrition, physical activity and mental health with skeletal health, muscles, strength, endurance, flexibility and agility. C6.3 classifies the common injuries of bones and muscles and describes protocol for seeking medical help for themselves and others in that situation like providing first aid in such situations. C6.4 outlines and challenges the societal beliefs and taboos associated with different aspects of growth and development at adolescent stage. CG7 learns about tournaments at the international, national, state, district and block levels. C7.1 charts the various tournaments at international, national, state, district and block levels. C7.2 describes the participation criteria and rules of tournaments. C7.3 summarizes the support or organizational structures to participate in tournaments. C7.4 explains the different forms and procedures for participating in tournaments. Page number 432, 8.5.3.2, Learning Standards 2, CG1 demonstrates competence in the understanding of movement, concepts, strategies and principles while engaging in and performing physical activities including sports. C1.1 exhibits all movements and motor skills required to participate and play in at least one sport or yoga or any other physical activity that is team, dual or individual. C1.2 exhibits the ability to use complex movement concepts and principles to develop and refine one's own game or sports skills. C1.3 applies knowledge and understanding of movements and skills to develop their own physical activity plan, follows a routine and assesses independently. CG2 exhibits sensitivity and learns to regulate their personal and social behavior towards themselves and others. C2.1 reflects upon their own and others' behaviors before, during and after the physical activity. This may include different but related behaviors including emotional state of mind, physical fitness, fatigue, fair play, biases, personal interests. C2.2 articulates the importance of a team member's support to improve performance in a game. By analyzing the behavior of students when someone is emotionally or physically hurt and how their support may improve the performance of the others. C2.3 modifies or creates new games and rules that are more inclusive in nature. C2.4 creates and applies safety rules and protocols for physical activity and visualizes how they can be applied outside the field as well. C2.5 demonstrates fairness and responsible behavior in tough contexts and situations. C2.6 
exhibits modesty after an exceptional performance and accepts defeat gracefully and enjoys the game. CG3 demonstrates social sensitivity and mental engagement in physical activity or game situations. C3.1 designs and executes multiple strategies for the game. C3.2 understands and deals with their own and others' emotions and the thinking process during the game. C3.3 demonstrates calmness and courage in difficult situations and can calm their teammates. CG4 learns to connect physical activity with health, enjoyment, challenge, expression and social interaction. C4.1 discusses activities that bring personal satisfaction. C4.2 identifies diverse cultures with special reference to dance, physical activity, local games and spaces to interact. CG5 learns about tournaments at the international, national, state, district and block levels. C5.1 charts the various tournaments as international, national, state, district and block levels. C5.2 describes the participation criteria and rules of tournament. C5.3 summarizes the support structure and organizational structure to participate in tournaments. C5.4 explains the different forms and procedures for participating in tournaments. Page number 433, section 8.6, Content The approach principles and methods of selecting content have commonalities across subjects. Those have been discussed in Part A, Chapter 3, Section 3.2 of this document. This section focuses only on stage-specific variations that a teacher needs to keep in mind in the teaching and practice of the physical education curriculum in schools. Hence, it will be useful to read this section along with above-mentioned section. 8.6.1 Stage-Specific Considerations 8.6.1.1 Preparatory Stage At this stage, the students will spend most of their time in free play and only a little time in structured sessions. Free play allows students to use their imagination and develop creativity. It is widely known and accepted that free play develops many important skills for students in the preparatory stage. Not only do they learn physical capacities, option, gross and fine motor skills, auditory perception and visual perception, but also individual capacities such as language development, problem solving, independence and social capacities such as communication, collaboration, negotiation and empathy to name a few. For free play to be effective and challenging for the students, the school can provide materials which allow students to creatively utilize objects and materials around them that are easily available in the neighborhood. Objects such as different sized of soft balls and bats, tires, small spades, that is blunted, any kind of toy, clay, colors, that is crayons, sketch pens, boards, chart paper and musical objects. Having a sand pit and access to small water source can also be considered. The objective is to provide students with enough objects and spaces to play different kinds of games either independently or in groups. The teacher allows free play but with some agreed upon rules, that is, boundary of the play area, hygiene, harming others, safety related rules. Free play is not guided but is monitored. Teachers and facilitators need to be present and keenly observe all the students throughout the duration. Planned sessions for the preparatory stage can use a range of local games. At this stage, planned sessions need to be fluid and not based on strict rules. The teacher can introduce simple games which do not require a lot of explanation and are intuitive. Planned sessions can also be used for specific purposes such as building motor skills but it needs to be gamified. 
the facilitator can either create or find games which are linked to specific skills that need to be taught. For example, jumping and hopping can be done through animal movement games like frog jumps and running and dodging can be done through a game of tag or dodgeball. Gilli Danda can be used for hand-eye coordination. Page number 434 8.6.1.2 Middle Stage In the middle stage, students continue to play local games but have more structured sessions. By this stage, students have higher proficiency with simpler games and can be introduced to popular sports gradually. In the structured sessions, the teachers need to gradually bring in an understanding of more rules that will need to be remembered while playing. Specific skills need to play popular regional sports can also be introduced. Both objectives can be met through simpler versions of the sport to begin with and with each grade, more skills and rules of the sport can be introduced. For example, for invasive games, that is, games where one team has to cross over to the other team's territory, such as hockey, football, basketball and ultimate frisbee, simpler games involving just kicking or hitting or throwing on targets can be introduced. Only playing penalties for football and hockey is an example. For field-based games, such as cricket, only bowling to a wicket or wall, only batting or only catching or fielding-based games can be used. For net-based games such as badminton, volleyball and table tennis, simplification can be achieved by games in which players need to learn to hit the ball or shuttlecock with the right technique, keeping the shuttlecock or volleyball or TT ball from falling by hitting it again and again into the air is an example. Slowly, the complexity can be increased by playing mini versions of the sport with most of the rules in place while also building individual capacities such as observation, reflection, emotional regulation, expanding spatial awareness and peripheral vision and making quick judgments based on gameplay. Simultaneously, social capacities such as effective communication, collective decision-making, working together towards a common goal and other such capacities also need to be taught. The students at this stage will learn more about their bodies and learn individual practices such as yoga and strength exercises in great detail. They will learn to create their own warm-up and cool-down routines. Emphasis also needs to be given to students taking more responsibility for building a culture of inclusive sports at school. They need to play an active role in ensuring all students feel safe, motivated and encouraged to play. This can be a challenge to achieve for students in this stage, but it needs to be worked on by the teacher through circle time where students get the space to express and reflect on their actions. Box 8.61 Circle Time – A Way to Ensure Values and Disposition in Physical Education All the students sit in a circle and set some ground rules with the help of the teacher. Some essential ideas are 1. Everyone in the circle is equal. No one is more important than the others. It reflects in the seating as well. It is a circle and everyone is sitting at the same level. 2. Everybody should respect each other and their feelings. 3. No one should interrupt while another person is talking and give their complete attention. 4. Everyone in the circle should get the opportunity to talk and others should encourage it. Page number 435. With the ground rules set, the teacher can guide the session by asking everyone to share simple thoughts after any session. An easy method is to ask everyone to share a star and a wish. A star is something that the student really enjoyed in the session. It could be something they or a team did or any occurrence that positively affected the student. A wish is something that the student wish had happened in the session. It could be something you wish, something that they or their team had done better. 
It could also be an activity they wish to be included or more time to play. Every student can share a star and a wish and tag, that is, pass the chance on to another student, that is, other than their close friends, to to share. The process continues till all students have shared. This star and wish can be modified over a period to different abilities we want the students to pick up. This can be modified over a period to get students to observe themselves, their actions and feelings and those of others. Sharing in this manner regularly with the teacher with the basic etiquette observed can create a safe learning space for students. Some pertinent and powerful questions can be brought into this space to discuss. Are we biased towards our friends when we play? Do we pass the ball equally to everyone? Are we including everyone equally in a game? Or are some people not having as much fun? And so on. 8.6.1.3 Secondary Stage At this stage, students can be given a choice to engage with certain sports more seriously and build specific skills for them than others and for students to play multiple sports at the same time. The sport can be played with all the international rules and with all its complexity. Students who choose a sport more seriously can train more rigorously through sports-specific drills. Playtime for students needs to be balanced with drills based on student interest. Those who are not keen on building superior skills should be allowed free play of different sports and not be forced to pick one sport. There should also be sufficient focus on building strength and flexibility through yoga and strength conditioning. Students must be taught about common injuries and how to avoid them through practice. The emphasis on circle time and building a culture of sport must increase at this stage. Students should be encouraged to discuss their emotional states while playing more openly with each other. Circle time at this stage can be used to talk about many things that are commonly seen in sports and are unhealthy. For example, a discussion on how different people feel when a captain or a coach shouts at their players. How decisions are taken in a team of students or do team members have a say in who gets to bat or bowl first and so on. Would be valuable educational conversations. Students in the secondary stage must be taught to set the right example for younger students and in helping the teacher with organizing school sports events. For example, senior students can help organize athletic events on campus. They could also be referees or umpires for games conducted for younger students. Secondary students can be given leadership roles which will help build their skills too. For example, a student who can be asked to facilitate circle time with the instructor only participating as an observer. Page number 436, Box 8.62 Weather Conditions Physical education classes could be particularly challenging in tough or extreme weather conditions. India has very diverse weather conditions. Extreme cold, hot, and rain are witnessed in several regions. The following suggestions can help in such cases. Time tabling. Areas which witness tough, that is not extreme, hot and cold weather conditions can consider working on rearranging their timetable. For example, in hot climates, the preparatory and the middle stage students play in the morning and the secondary stage students play in the afternoon. In cold weather, the reverse can be done. Indoor activities, in extreme weather, when playing outside is not possible at all, indoor physical education classes must be organized. Physical activities such as yoga, static movements, dance, theater, high intensity interval training that is HIIT and medium intensity intermittent training that is MIIT workouts can be considered. To enable more space per student, schools should make provision 
for access to a big hall in the school or in the vicinity which can enable these activities few examples of games popular in india are given below one fugdi here we have an image of a few people sitting in a circle and playing fugdi region chatisgarh india how to play as the game begins all the students sing a song which is gobar de bacharu gobar de kaharon khunta la lipan de in unison four six or more students gather sitting on their legs keeping balance and alternatively moving their feet back and forth the student who gets tired and stops moving is eliminated the student who plays for the longest time is the winner social media reference https colon slash slash www.youtube.com slash watch question mark v is equal to i seven zero i nine nine k five e o zero page number four thirty seven two tunnel ball here we have an image of a few people playing tunnel ball region across the world how to play two teams are formed with a minimum of 8 players in each team both teams stand in a different queue 10 to 15 meters apart facing the same direction each player in a queue should be at least 1 meter apart and this can vary depending on the difficulty level of the game the players form a tunnel by spreading their feet apart the first player passes the ball from under the tunnel and the last player standing in the queue catches it after that the player with the ball comes running stands in front of the line and passes the ball the game continues until one team finishes first social media reference https colon slash slash www dot youtube dot com slash watch question mark v is equal to q p zero five S S H Z G P eight section eight point seven pedagogy and assessment the approach principles and methods of pedagogy and assessment have commonalities across subjects those have been discussed in part A chapter three section three point three and section three point four of this document this section focuses only on what is most critical to physical education in schools hence it will be useful to read this section along with above mentioned section 8.7.1 pedagogy for physical education several research studies confirm how students learn physical education the following key ideas are useful to know how to teach the subject a physical education follows the same teaching learning principles that promote a student's learning in other subjects giving space to students's context respecting students as individuals providing them opportunities connecting to their lives giving them level appropriate tasks deciding content based on learning outcomes understanding the learning levels of students and providing periodic assessment and feedback are effective teaching learning practices in physical education too page number 438 b physical education requires teachers to demonstrate so that students can observe practice those skills or moves and learn this is because physical activities fall under the category of practical knowledge where to know is acquired only by doing the activity c providing time for interactions before and after the activity improves the development of cognitive concepts values and dispositions such interactions must be moderated by teachers and students should be encouraged to voice their opinions freely d students learn best 
when they have a diverse set of activities to choose from and equal opportunities. The practice of motor skills in diverse ways is fundamental to fitness and mastery of movement in physical education. This means designing a range of activities and sports for all students, including those with disabilities. E. Encouraging sportspersonship, avoiding personal comparisons and focusing on skill acquisition will make physical education effective. Teachers should implement methods to define skill attainment in terms of proficiency rather than comparison to others. A motivating environment and a focus on personal improvement rather than personal comparison of students provide students with a positive and satisfying learning experience. F. Planning and Instructions Concrete planning of the physical education class is key to one's instructions. Some aspects of planning to consider while planning the sessions are 1. Planning to avoid injuries through warm-up and cool-down activities and ensuring safety in the use of equipment and space. 2. Planning to be effective through teacher demonstrations and modelling. 3. Planning for the right levels of challenge for different groups of students. 4. Planning should be focused on the learning outcomes that need to be achieved. G. Participation and inclusion. Participation of students in all activities is the responsibility of the teacher. Some students tend to be over-enthusiastic about playing and the teacher must ensure that all students get their turn to participate. Games and activities must be chosen so that students of all genders and abilities can participate. H. Motivation Not all students will be enthusiastic about taking part in sports, particularly if they fear that they will not be good. Students may be kept motivated by teachers themselves demonstrating excitement and enthusiasm in the physical education sessions, Teachers must encourage active involvement, support students to acquire skills, acknowledge and appreciate growth and improvement rather than mere outcomes. Instruct clearly, give everyone a chance to participate, be sensitive to students' feelings of pressure or anxiety and treat every student fairly. All this would go a long way towards motivating students to give their full participation in the classes. I. Safety A safe environment in physical education has two components, the physical and the psychological. The physical refers to the need to ensure students do not get injured and that facilities and equipments are safe. Teacher preparedness to handle emergencies with access to a doctor and proper supervision of all physical activities. The psychological component refers to the need to ensure that students feel emotionally and receive respectful treatment, encouragement, support and fair redress of grievances during a physical education class. Page number 439, Box 8.71 Safeguarding against sexual harassment and bullying the sports and games field is a place of learning about capacities related to the body, its limits, working together with others as a team and sportspersonship. However, it is also a place where certain kinds of aggression and uncharitable behaviour also show up. Given that students will be organised to engage in sports, games and related physical activity in a mixed gender and mixed abilities format, they must be explicitly educated about patience, sensitivity and care for physical boundaries. This would include formally teaching them about forms of sexually demeaning and harassing behaviour, ways of identifying them and empowering them with protocols and means to report such behaviours to their teachers and the principal. Teacher's Voice 8.71 learning a new game. My students in grade 6 are very enthusiastic when it comes to sports and most of them are eager to play a new game. 
I decided to introduce them to a new game, handball. And instead of directly going to the field, we began with a small discussion around it. As we discussed the history, rules, and regulations of the game, the students showed keen interest by listening and sharing information about similar activities they engage in within their communities. The students also shared the local games they play and the rules they follow while playing them. In the field, we began with practicing skills like dribbling, passing, movement, throwing, and catching. along with some basic warm ups initially the students practiced it individually and then in groups during the practice session the students struggled working in pairs and groups as they complained about their partner not doing the drill properly most of the students struggled to catch the ball i explained and demonstrated how the arms should be released while catching the ball i also asked them to throw the ball in a direction that would be easier for their teammates to catch it was a productive session as it helped enhance their techniques to play a game of handball four teams were formed and a 10 minute match was conducted between the two teams initially the students struggled with coordination among the team members they were encouraged to coordinate their movements and pass the ball effectively additionally they were challenged to change direction while passing the ball further enhancing their coordination skills and adaptability on the field through consistent practice and guidance during the sports period the students showed remarkable improvement and were able to overcome their challenges the students who initially struggled to hold or throw the ball showed significant progress the students also actively engaged in discussions and strategies after the match fostering effective collaboration and communication page number 440 8.7.2 assessment in physical education the following principles must inform assessment in physical education and well-being across stages a students must be assessed primarily through demonstrated performance performance can be best assessed through observation of students during field activities drills and games against clear criteria for marking b values and dispositions must also be assessed through demonstrated performance c Written tests can be used for assessment of specific competencies example knowing your body growth and development the rules and regulations of games or sports knowledge of tournaments d other tools include records maintained by teachers reflective journals maintained by students self assessment and a viva voce to understand the students's thinking and understanding a few teacher voices illustrate different kinds of assessments below teacher's voice 8.72 safety i teach grade 9 students it is important for my students to understand precautions related to risk and safety while playing games or sports i find that their understanding related to this aspect is more about not physically hurting others and themselves and obeying rules and regulations while playing they often neglect to warm up appropriately before the game in their hurry to start playing therefore i decided to assess how many of them are actually aware of this aspect instead of asking them to simply state safety precautions i decided to create a multiple choice question Which of the following rules is the most important for managing risk and safety in any game or sport? A. Number of participants and their roles. B. Clothing and footwear. C. Warming up appropriately. D. Fair competition. C is the right answer. Page number four forty one. Teacher's voice eight point seven three. Dodgeball. 
I teach grade five students, and I know they love playing dodgeball. I decided to use this game to assess my students' progress towards attaining the competencies of the preparatory stage. I decided to observe them while they played and assess them against a marking scheme that I developed. I was conscious that I had to observe all eight players for the thirty minutes that the game would be played. I devised a system wherein I would focus on one player for about four minutes for the duration of the game in two sets, that is, two minutes at a time. Of course, this was a rough approximation, but it helped me to distribute my attention across all the students. I used the following grading scheme to assess the students. Rubric for dodgeball. Here we have a table with four columns: criteria, grade A, grade B, grade C. Row one: throwing a ball with force. Throws the ball with the required force, with few exceptions. Assesses force required to throw the ball most of the time. Is not able to assess the force required to throw the ball. Row two: throwing a ball to the desired spot. Makes the ball reach the target with few exceptions. Makes the ball reach the target most of the time. Is not able to make the ball reach the target. Row three, catching the ball. Catches the ball when it comes towards them with few exceptions. Assesses the force of the ball as it comes towards them and catch it most of the time. Gets hit by the ball. Soon after the game starts, row four shows team spirit, leads coordinated attacks on the opposite team, shouts out instructions or advice to team members when appropriate. Sole focus is on protecting self. Row five shows qualities of a sports person, discusses the important points of the game with the other team and share tips. Is polite with members of the opposing team, does not interact with members of the opposing team, care for safety of others, guides other team members on safety rules, maintains appropriate distance from others, warms up adequately before the game and keeps moving during the game, is not able to assess appropriate distance from others, warming up is inadequate. And movement during the game is not constant. Page number four forty two. Teacher's voice eight point seven four. Viva voz. I teach grade seven students. I conduct a viva voz for students, choosing questions from a game of their choice. Since I feel it is a good supplement to a written test and the observation of a game or sport. It gives me an opportunity to assess the competencies and learning outcomes that I have not been able to address through other means, and gives students the opportunity to demonstrate their learning in an area of their choice. I assess student responses using a marking scheme I have prepared. Since there are so many students to be covered, I spend ten minutes with each student. I usually try to keep it in the format of a discussion so that students feel comfortable. Please respond to the questions. I will ask you related to a game or sport of your choice. Please take your time to respond. Why did you choose this game for discussion? What do you like about it or why do you think it is important? A. How do you prepare for the game? What do you do or think about before you start playing the game? B. Why do you think rules and regulations are important? What would happen if there were no rules and regulations? How do you think the person playing against or the opposing team should behave? Why do you think so? Marking scheme. We have a table here with two columns: criteria and descriptors and points. Row one. Understanding of chosen game or sport, understands only the rules of the game or sport. One point, understands rules and techniques 
or skills of the game or sport 2 points understands effective game playing strategies that is individual or group 3 points row 2 understanding of preparation for game or sport preparation is limited to clothing and equipment 1 point preparation includes warm up 2 points preparation includes warm up and discussion with teammates or coach and meeting opponent or opponents 3 points row 3 understanding of rules and regulations understanding is based only on own experience of game or sport 1 point has an adequate understanding of the game or sport 2 points has an adequate understanding and is able to communicate why they are important 3 points row 4 understanding of sport personship states expectation of behavior in general 1 point states expectation of behavior with reference to rules and regulations of the game or sport 2 points goes beyond the written rules to the unwritten rules such as integrity care and concern sensitivity 3 points you are just listening to the national curriculum framework 2023 this is brought to you by CIET NCERT New Delhi India